Okay, hello and welcome to your lecture on neural communication. Uh, so some big words there, but basically we're talking about, later we're, we're going to look at how our brain communicates with our body, um, but we're going to look on it at, a, at a, a smaller scale today. So neural, meaning having to do with neurons, nerves, anything have to do with communication in the brain, and then communication, how our body talks to our brain, and how within our brain there's communication between different parts. All right, so here's a brief overview of what we're going to be going over. Today we're just doing neural communication. You have separate notes on the nervous system and then the endocrine system as well. Uh, so this is going back to one of the perspectives of psychology. Remember that three chart that has like the biological, um, the psychological, and the social? This is looking at the three and how they connect within the brain. So I really want you guys to keep this kind of overarching question above of like how does my bio biological brain interact with the psych so the thought process thinking feelings and then socially so how do all three of those things connect uh, to make um, the study of behavior and people okay so today we're really going to be focusing on the bio part of it the nerves neurons and how they talk to each other so we need to start out with what a basic neuron is. A neuron is a cell, it's a specialized cell. So just like you have like a muscle cell, how you have skin cells, different types of cells. A neuron is a cell um, that has a very specific job and task and it looks a lot different than some cells that you're probably used to seeing in biology with that classic like round shape or a plant cell with its square shape. So a neuron is a specialized cell. There are three different types. We briefly talked about inner neurons in reflexes, looking at the spinal cord and how, remember, inner neurons are those ones that talk in between. Today we're going to look at sensory and motor, but going back to that example of, um, or just the example of holding your finger over a flame, remember I have neurons that sense that something's hot and that goes back to my spinal cord where it talks to other inner neurons and then my motor neurons pull it away. Right, so two different types of neurons, something that senses and something that makes it move. All right, I'm going to have you guys draw a neuron and then label it. So pause it when you need to, and we'll go back and we'll add some, some details. Okay, so there's three parts of a neuron that are really important to know. The dendrites, the axon, and the myelon sheath. Um, these other three parts, the terminal branches and the cell body, we'll talk about. But these are like the really big differences than looking at a big, uh, a regular cell from biology. And we're going to look at what happens when things go wrong with that part of the cell. So the myelin, the myelin sheath is like the, the stuff that wraps a cell. And if you're familiar, we'll talk about it later, but you, if you're familiar with multiple sclerosis, um, that's really when that starts breaking down and there's lots of like shaking. So there's not, um, there's not good communication between cells. Okay, so let's take out our, um, our sheet on a neuron and I want you to uh, label the different parts. So this is a neuron, remember this is a cell. Looks very different from a cell that you've looked at before. Okay, but there's some things that kind of look the same. So if you look in here, right, this is the cell body, like, and that's like the, the middle there, that's like the nucleus that has the DNA in it. But these branches and this long tail with more branches make it look very different. I also want you to look at the um, how it's elongated, so it's a long cell because neurons connect to each other this way. Right? I'm looking at, think of like an electric cord as it goes down from like cell to cell to cell. All right, so let's first talk about these dendrites, so the dendritic trees. These are the ones over here, these are the ones that receive information from other cells. So remember, I want you to think about the neurons. Class is starting. The neurons are connected one after each other. Okay, so from this this way this way, and then those dendrites are the ones that connect to the one before it. So they're the ones that are for receiving messages. Dendritic trees or dendrites are responsible for taking in messages. All right. They then go travel. These messages go through the axon. This is kind of like that long cord or the tail, and it passes the messages along here. Here's my cell body. It goes all the way through here, and then it's going to end over here in my terminal buttons. All right. So it says passes messages away from cell body to other neurons, or these might end on a muscle or a gland. So they're acting directly on a muscle or a gland. This is the myelin sheath that we talked about. It insulates my axon. So think about like wrapping something around an electric, so you have that electric cord and the, 
the rubber that you find like wrapped around it, that would be like almost like a myelin sheath. It's an insulator and it helps speed up how fast I can send messages to another cell. All right, it's really making it go really fast because it's wrapped in, it's making it very efficient. So that neural impulse or the message goes along during an action potential. We'll talk about that here in a second. And it moves down the axon in order. Here are my terminal buttons. These are the ones that make junctures with other cells. So if you can imagine after this, over here, you're gonna have another uh, axon, or I'm sorry, another cell that has dendrites, right? So terminal buttons, they form that junction with the next cell. And then this again is the cell body. This is like the classic cell that you're used to from biology with my DNA in the middle and all the organelles in there, okay? All right, so let's talk about the speed of neurons. You can kind of think of how fast you react to things, either sensory or motor, but they are very, very, very fast, all right? Um, they range from about two miles an hour to 200 miles per hour. That's how fast the impulse is moving, okay? And that's throughout your body. And we measure them in milliseconds. So we can actually measure how long it takes a reflex to occur, how fast it takes, or it takes for a, an impulse to move along. So we measure those in the thousands of seconds. So think about how fast that is. All right, so two to 200 miles per hour, very fast. Now, we need to know the steps of an action potential. So learning about action potentials is probably the most difficult part because it's nothing that you've seen before. Um, if you have, great. Well, I want you to kind of take a step back sometimes and really think about what are we talking about. We're talking about how messages move along. So there's some nitty gritty details that you'll have to know, but think again about like how, what does this have to do with to passing along messages. Okay, so we're gonna talk about a couple things. It's called the firing of a neuron. So how we, we activate a neuron to send a message. We're gonna learn about the action potential, the ions that are associated with it, what a resting potential is, and then what it means to be selectively permeable. All right, so first of all, how we fire a neuron. It goes through a couple different stages. It depolarizes, and then it goes for a refractory period. It excites or inhibits, it reaches a threshold, and it's an all or nothing response. I really want you to kind of take a second and circle that. This is an all or nothing response. This does not mean that like it'll depolarize and then not go on to the next thing. Once a neuron has depolarized, all of those steps must take place. They either all happen or none of them happen. Okay, we're gonna go back to talking about these steps one by one with another example of our cell in our picture. So look at, this is a, a picture here or it's making big a portion of the axon, so that tail, with the myelin sheath removed. Okay, so it's gonna make it bigger for us. All right, remember that it's moving along the axon this way, so it goes from cell body down the axon to the terminal buttons. And here is a bigger picture. So here's my cell body and here's my axon. I want you to notice these pictures of the arrows going in. So what happens when a neuron is stimulated, it actually creates a charge or electric charge, a short, um, a brief, all right? So think of like a short electric charge. If it's strong enough, that all or nothing, or I'm sorry, that all action potential happens. So if when I get a, a strong enough charge or, or stimulation, the, an action potential will occur, okay? It, it creates something called a depolarization, all right? So I want you to think of like polar is gonna be plus and minus. So plus and minus are gonna be our polars. And the next steps of an action potential will occur. So after I get that depolarized, all right, you can freeze it here. The neighboring areas now happens. It's kind of like a, um, so look, I have all these positives going in here. And what happens then is it wants to send the positives back out. And then the positives come in here. So it really creates this like ripple effect of like positives going in, positive going out, positives going in, positive going out, all right? And that happens in order going down the axon, all right? What happens is there's a pump that's activated in the cell membrane, it's called the sodium potassium pump, and it transports the ions back out of the cell. You probably remember pumps from uh, osmosis or, um, what did we do? Transport in cells. So we talked about anything that pumps requires energy. So I think going in and things being pumped back out. As that happened, it moves along, keeps going down really fast, and the next part is recharged. Okay, so it goes in, out, in, out, in, out until it goes all the way down the axon. All right, it then hits the end here, right here are my terminal buttons. 
and that's how act, how that's how neurons really communicate to each other is something called the synapse or the gap this area right here in between the the end of the terminal button and the dendrites of the next cell okay we're gonna have a separate lecture on neurotransmitters but here's how that basically happens so here's my sending neuron here and here's my receiving neuron. So I have all those terminal buttons, so terminal meaning the end, ending on to other dendrites. That action potential goes down, and at the synapse, or the end, I get all of these neurotransmitters released. Okay, so these neurotransmitters are just kind of sitting there waiting to go. They're in little, like, um, packets, okay? So what happens is when this is stimulated, it moves all the way down, and those neurotransmitters fuse with the edge of the uh, terminal button and they're pushed out into the synaptic gap or the cleft where they are taken up by the receptors neurons on the other side so the this is a dendritic tree of another neuron all right so those those are think of like these neurotransmitters like these little messages and they're all of a sudden put out into this gap where they're taken up by the next cell and these are see so you can see here all right, so it absorbs those neurotransmitters and a process called reuptake. Sounds pretty so I'm retaking things back up. It's released here, taken in here. All right, so that's how the two actually communicate. My neurons are not touching, they have something called a gap in between them, and those neurotransmitters are really those messages that send uh, the, the message to the next cell. All right, we are going to talk about, you rewind this, play it back again. We're actually going to look at neurons in class and, and kind of act it out because this really is an action um, going on in your, your cells. But here are the neurotransmitters that have the biggest effect on us and we'll have a separate lecture on that. So we're going to talk about acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, GABA glutamate, and then endorphins. Bring any questions you have to class and I'll see you later.